Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So lately it seems like more and more games are coming out broken, and it seems to be in a somewhat intentional way. Recently it was City Skylines 2. This one seems to have some insane requirements and just straight up doesn't work on many machines. Apparently they knew that it was going to be broken on launch and they launched it anyway, so this was very much an intentional plan. Then also something crazy is how the devs apparently intentionally targeted 30 FPS, even on high-end machines, because apparently there is no real benefit to aim for higher. This seems to be an insane statement. Personally I get legit headaches if I try to play games on my PC at 30 FPS or lower. But anyway, so apparently the plan was to intentionally launch a broken game. And another somewhat recent example was Cyberpunk 2077. This was another game that was completely broken at launch. Many people couldn't play it, especially on consoles, everything just straight up didn't work. And we can go further than that and look at No Man's Sky. This one technically wasn't broken in a technical sense, it just absolutely did not match what was promised right before release. Regarding City Skylines 2, I basically read a comment that said something like, okay so the game is borderline unplayable right now, but just wait a bit and one year from now the game will be excellent. Just like both No Man's Sky and Cyberpunk, both those launched in extremely rough states, and through constant patches non-stop over several years, through that the games are now considered to be pretty good by pretty much everyone. So based on this, it does sound like the strategy for City Skylines 2 was exactly this, meaning launch a game in an unfinished, pretty much broken state, sell a bunch of copies and get some money right away, then basically just update the game constantly throughout one year, and then one year from now, when the game is essentially fixed and everything is great, then they will get tons of press praising the game for how much it has improved. Now, as much as players might rightfully dislike this strategy, the honest truth is that it simply does work, so if I had to guess, I would say this strategy is probably going to be successful. One year from now, I assume the game will be great, and I assume it will get tons of positive press talking about how much the game has improved massively in this past year. So sort of a rags to riches story. This strategy, when it does work, it leads to more PR and a lot more visibility than just launching a good game at release. Basically this lets you have multiple marketing beats, so your game keeps being mentioned and generally the more a game is mentioned the more it sells. Especially if it is mentioned as sort of a quote unquote inspiring story about how far along the game has come since the broken release. It's simply human nature to be attracted to a story that has a nice arc, so something that started off bad and became great, that is usually a more compelling story than something that was great right out of the gate. So you might look at this and how this strategy seems to work, you might look at this and as an indie game dev yourself you might think perhaps trying to do the exact same strategy. Basically release your game way too early in a broken or simply unfinished state in order to start selling some copies and getting some money and then just keep updating it and one year after release the game will be awesome, the press will talk about your fantastic story of how much the game has improved, players will love it and people will buy tons and tons of copies. Now in this video I want to encourage you not to do this. Even if you just ignore the morally questionable nature of this strategy, even if you ignore that, if you don't have a massive marketing budget, if you don't have a massively well-known game, then this strategy simply will not work. You will not get a second chance with players. One year from now people will still be interested in City Sky just because it's a massive well-known game and if they update the game and they make it awesome there will indeed be a lot of people lining up waiting to play that awesome version so pretty much exactly the same thing that happened with cyberpunk and no man's sky those games were known by pretty much everyone and people really wanted those games to be good so people were willing to wait until they were good they were willing to give it a second chance and when they did they actually enjoyed the improved game so this strategy did work for those games potentially even better than if they had launched in an entirely great state However, that is only because those games have massive marketing budgets and everyone knows about them and everyone wants the games to succeed, whereas most indies do not have that luxury. Most indies get just one shot at impressing the player. And if you lose that one shot because you launch your game way too early, then you are very unlikely to get a second chance. This is very much what I talked about in the video where I explained how the Steam algorithm works, how in order for Steam to help you promote your game, you basically need to get the ball rolling yourself. And like I said in that video, if you have a massive marketing budget, then you can pretty much brute force the algorithm into giving you visibility. Like for example how the FIFAs and the NBAs, these games they always get tons of negative reviews, and yet they can always spend enough in order to make the reviews not matter. So even when the games are mostly negative, they still get tons of promotion on Steam. But like I said, if you don't have a marketing budget on that insane scale, if not, and if you launch a game and it does not have a good launch, either because the game is broken or simply because it's not very good, if that happens then it's almost impossible to come back from a bad launch. Again, assuming you don't have a massive marketing budget, which I'm guessing you probably don't. What I'm saying here is applicable to both full launches but also to early access. Like I mentioned in the Steam algorithm video, you should not go into early access with the assumption that going into early access gives you two launches. In most cases that does not happen. If the early access launch does poorly, chances are the full launch will also go poorly. 
Basically, what I'm trying to say in this video is do not compare yourself to these mega successful games. You should not compare directly to these and assume that if you have bad launch, you can come back from it because technically these games did do it. And one reason why I'm making this video is because I did experience this firsthand. One of my games, Survivor's Cod Gauntlets, this one didn't launch into early access and the game wasn't broken or anything. It was pretty decent at launch, it's actually one of my own favorite games. It had a good amount of content in the first early access version and the reviews were pretty positive, but due to various factors, mainly lack of marketing and visuals, because of that the game did not really have a successful launch, it just sold a tiny amount. However, at the time, I did notice that there were lots of other games that were finding success over time through constant updates, so that was pretty much my plan, consistently update the game and hope that people would talk about the updates and how much the game had improved and the final launch would be a huge success. You can actually go watch the news page on Steam to see all of the updates that I did. You can see how I made the first of many updates on November 18, 2014. Then one week after that, update 2, one week after update 3, 4, 5, and so on. So constant updates and constantly adding tons of important meaningful updates. I had started cutscenes, I added a ton more lights, I added animated cursors and better looking light of sight. I updated the tutorials, added some achievements, added much more gauntlets, added tons more weapons, event actions and so on. In total, I put out an update every single week for the entirety of the 7 months of early access and even beyond the 1.0 release. I really don't think that I missed a single week of updates. But the reality is, even though I was working really hard on these updates and massively improving the game with every single week, in reality, all of this, this was all pretty much just screaming to the void. Because the game did not do well at launch, and because it was a tiny indie game that nobody knew about, because of that, there was no one waiting and following the development. All of these updates, despite massively improving the game, despite being very consistent, there was no one waiting to play it. And because nobody was waiting to play, there was also no press interested in covering it. So eventually the game launched out of early access and sadly it didn't really sell anymore. I'm still very proud of the final game and pushing out all of these updates, but in terms of actual sales, they really had no effect because again, nobody cared or knew about the game. So this is essentially the flip side of what you see in the Cyberpunk and No Man's Sky. This is why I want to caution you against the strategy. Basically, do not assume that you can follow what Cyberpunk and No Man's Sky did. Do not assume that you can launch your game in a broken state and then improve it significantly through updates and assume the players will be ready and willing to give your game a second chance. Unless you have a massive marketing budget like these games, that will simply not happen. If you intentionally launch your game in a subpar state, chances are no one will know even if you end up massively improving the game over time. So my advice to you is really what is pretty obvious. Make your launch the best it can be. Although at the same time, let me also say this does not mean that you should not update your games, that is not what I'm saying. Even if your launch goes poorly, I still encourage you to update the game based on player feedback. Make sure you fix bugs and add any improvements that might help improve the game. I would pretty much just advise against spending a ton of time, a ton of money on consistent updates. Things like spending an entire year making a massive update like Cyberpunk. I would say don't do that because if you don't have a marketing budget the same size as these ones, then chances are no one will hear about your massive update. Again, regardless of how much it improves the game. Now in my case, my latest game, Dinky Gardens, actually had a pretty good launch and I am actually planning to push out meaningful updates over the next months and years. But the reason for that plan is mainly because I have this channel. Any update that I can make on the game, I will talk about on videos on this channel. So basically that helps avoid the issue that I had with Survivor's Call of the Gauntlets, where I made all these updates but had no idea to reach the players. And in my case, even if the updates don't lead to an increase in sales, it will still give me a reason to make various tutorials and implement random videos and make random mechanics on this channel. So regardless of whether or not those updates have an impact on the actual sales numbers, it will still be worth it. Like for example, I will make a video when I implement Steam achievements. I will make another one when I test out the limits of netcode for game objects to see how many objects it can handle. I will make another one as I add more interesting and different game modes. Basically, I will do those updates and those videos primarily as a way to try out interesting ideas, make some unique videos, and not as a way to try to get the press and sales numbers to massively increase. I'm not expecting that to happen. Anyway, so yeah, this recent debacle with City Skyline 2 made me want to talk about this topic. I hope you found it interesting and I hope this information helps you make a better informed plan when deciding what to do with your games. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.